we are being recorded right now so that we can share this uh, info session with those people who could not make it to lunch. Um, so you want to give a wave to the, all the audience? <laughs> it's sports day, that's why we're, or you guys aren't dressed in sporty clothes. I kind of am. I'm wearing best over sweatshirt. Okay, it's very sporty. All right, good. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I never know how many people are going to be able to come. We had two info sessions yesterday. Um, I know it's difficult with your schedule, so I appreciate that you guys are here. Basically, I'll give you a little bit of um, overview of the programs and then give you a chance to ask questions. Um, it might be very program specific. Some of the questions might be more general, but I just want to um, try to give you as much information as possible. So, last night, we had an, an earlier session, and we had two. Sorry, no problem. Two of our. Come on in. Come on in, Angel. Oh, um, I'll give you one of the No, that's fine. That's fine. I just already ate. You can have a seat right here. Um, we had our t the two girls who are currently here on exchange. Eliza from Australia on a gap year program. So she's here from January to June. And then Cassidy from South Africa who's here from January to March. And I should have been recording that session because they said some really great things about, I put them on the spot and I just asked them, you know, why did you choose to go on exchange? What have you learned from it? And asked them if they had tips to share with the other kids who were at the meeting. And the things that they said were quite inspiring. I mean, sometimes it sounds a little cheesy to repeat them, but, Going on exchange is the sort of thing that changes your life. Um, and it's probably one of the most challenging things that you could do. They talked about that, how hard it is to be so far away from home, um, how you, know, you don't know what to expect in a lot of ways. But they also both mentioned how rewarding it is, and they encouraged all the students to not, we just mentioned this at lunch, have, don't think too much about what you'll be missing here at Westover. So we'll return to Westover, you'll have the rest of your time here. Um, so one of the students said she really wanted to maximize her opportunities. And so exchange, doing exchange is one of the ways to do that. Westover offers a pretty unique program. Um, there are a lot of abroad programs you can do when you're in college, or you can do a more traditional sort of tourist experience over the summer while you're in high school. But the programs, to, to participate in during your academic year, or even over the summer, some of, our, some of these are, that's more unique. Um, and it's very immersive. You're living, in most cases, with a host family or you're boarding at the school. And so that, you are living the life of a local kid, which is unique. Um, the other thing that makes it very unique is that there's very little cost involved which is perhaps something parents are more concerned with than a typical teenager, but um, you are in charge of covering the airfare and incidentals. Some of the programs have, they request a fee up front to cover the programming that a student might be involved in, but that's like extra trips, um, going on safari, for example, in South Africa. Come on in. Um, and for the Jordanian exchange, which I know is not for everyone, but that one is free because the royal family covers the airfare, which is pretty cool. Um, the reason why we have that connection is because the princess came here as a student, and so we have that connection. Um, and there are a lot of concerns many Americans or much of the world have about um, being in the Middle East, um, George and I know is you know, experiencing a, a different situation now because of refugees, but in terms of, I just want to give my two cents for Jordan, in terms of a um, country in the Middle East, it's one of the safest countries there, and you're also, you know, under the, you have the support of the royal family, and you're living um, in one of the safest, nicest areas in Oman, um, and going to one of the best schools. So that's a pretty unique opportunity probably once in a lifetime. Um, 
So that's my sort of spiel about exchange programs. I know that I'm sort of speaking to the choir, preaching to the choir because you're all here. That means you're interested. Um, the other sort of blanket statement about these programs is that we have the details on these on this handout, um, the number of kids who are accepted, the dates, the um, grade level for the applicants. But I do need to say there's sort of a Hi. Hi. Two moms to come in if you were. Sure, that would be great. Really, no, that's okay. <laughs> the thing is coming yesterday. Perfect. Here, have a seat. Um, we're almost done with sort of introduction, and then I'll have you introduce yourself. Okay, cool. That'd be so great. Um, basically, the disclaimer is all of this is flexible. So if you are, you you wouldn't be the correct um, grade level, or you want to perhaps be flexible about your return over spring break or whatever it is. I always tell students and parents, just let's talk, let's go through the process, let's see um, how we can, I, I'd love to make it work for any kid who wants to go abroad. Um, this is in partnership with the host schools, and so the other piece of the disclaimer is sometimes they can't, you know, say normally they host three students, but one particular year they can't because they're doing renovations. Something like that. That can happen, um, and it's, it's just good to remember that Westover's not in charge of all the programming because it is this partnership. And so they might dictate what happens, the dates, for example, or they might have preferences with the grade levels, but I really want to kind of work with every one of you so that we can get a good match. Um, let me just say a little bit about the application process. The applications are due, oh, this should be two miles. Here's the application, and an example, I only gave one, or you know, I've made a ton of copies here, of the faculty evaluation form. So students need to fill out the application and get two faculty or staff evaluation forms completed and submit them to me immediately following spring break. Then we meet as a committee. We have people from the dorm, from the health center, from the academic office, and we make decisions on which program is the best match for the student. And then our goal is to let you know in early, mid-April. So that's the application process. The other handout that you have is just information um, more relevant to after you're accepted into the program, but I think it's just good to get you thinking about the other steps, what you have to do, what are some of the other expectations. Um, so that's kind of the, the overview. Um, I invited the students who have gone on exchange previously and they've been coming to different meetings. So today you have the pleasure of meeting with Leah. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Hi, I think you guys, well, not everyone knows me, but I'm Leah, I'm senior. And I went to France last year on exchange winter term, my junior year, and it was amazing. So definitely recommend it to everyone. Um, yeah, and like um, like Kate mentioned, the school kind of organizes most of what you're doing when you're there. Like, I know this, the school in France, um, you kind of have to go like get your own schedule. Um, it's not like Westover where the exchanges come and everything's like set up. You actually have to go and try to find out like which classes you're in if you want to switch something, you have to do it yourself. And so, like, um, what did that teach you? Um, well, it definitely like helped with the language skills from the get go, like just being able to you know, request things, and um, I guess it, it taught me like just to you know, stand up for yourself like, if you need to. I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was most challenging about the United Exchange? Um, I mean, I guess the language is, is definitely really hard at first. Because it's kind of hard to mostly understand, but not understand everything. And then I guess also just kind of being in a different country is obviously what goes without saying. It's a little different and challenging, but I think it's fun. It gets easier. Would you recommend? I was just going to say, had you traveled internationally before? Um, I had been to Canada in a car, so it was very different. <laughs> it kind of counts. Yeah. yeah. International. <laughs> so it was actually my first flight ever. So, like, not flight ever, like, but international flight ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been to California. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was cool. I remember I was really um, scared on the plane because I ended up sitting next to French people and I didn't really understand what they were saying. So that was kind of a scary introduction. But as soon as I got there, it took maybe about two weeks and then it got easier. Are any of you interested in the French speech? My daughter is. Our daughter. Mm. Oh, hey. Okay. Is she um, uh, going to her junior? Sophomore, going into sophomore. Okay, yeah, I know there's a sophomore there right now, so. How many photo firms? Two. But if they apply now, they have to be in. The idea is that they would have completed level three, which I believe they'll be in next year. Yeah. Correct. So again, I mean, I, I hate to say it, no, forget it. Let's not even consider it. Let's, you know, well, I think what I had emailed to Paige. Um, we can talk to the language teachers, we can talk to the academic office, I'd like to, you know, we can have the conversation, for sure. It, it, the reason why we have that um, in the application process is because it's really hard. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. I would recommend, like, being at least in French 3. Well, they I mean, would be in it for three quarters of the year. French three, okay. right? Because it, you they go in March. Yeah, yeah. They so go. They leave the you January. leave in January. So oh, January, oh, so January March. to March. Yeah. Um, I I was in French. I was in AP French when I went actually, but I know that my friend who went the year before me was in French four, and currently I think they're both in French four. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, it would just definitely be a challenge. So as long as you'd be willing to like try to learn the language there. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Would you recommend, because you went as a junior, you said, Yeah. So would you recommend going that it's harder as a junior because of where you are in the college process and all that? So maybe yeah. going as a sophomore is better? Is that it? might actually be better. I didn't really think of that, and I actually missed a lot of college stuff. I was able to catch up. It didn't really was a problem at all. But I think, yeah, I think it would be fine to go as a sophomore as long as the language level yeah. is OK. Yeah. Where in France were you? Um, Ville de Cotre. It's like um, in Picardy, North Paris. Okay. What other questions do you have for Leah? Have you had lunch, Leah? Yeah, I have lunch. Okay. <laughs> I know you probably have to leave at some point. Yeah, I'm just for class. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would be going oh, um, yeah. <laughs> on that England exchange, mm -hmm. and I know that I have sort of done like some looking into it and stuff and that takes place over spring break. Yes. How, so how much would I be missing like necessarily? Like how much school do you miss? Practically nothing. Okay. Um, and next year spring break will be a full three weeks. Yeah. And um, this year they are gonna leave two days early. And so they're gonna push their exams a little bit earlier. Um, but you still, so it's, it's a different kind of experience than going for three months, but it's still a pretty unique opportunity. Yeah, I was just wondering from an academic standpoint, like if I would have to have huge amounts of work to make up if I got back. And, yeah, um, no. I mean, whatever work might be assigned over spring break, but that'll be very minimal. And the other good thing about these programs is that. <laughs> Westover has been doing them for decades, and so the teachers are used to making allowances for students who are not here. So whether it is being in communication while you're gone, um, and assigning you know, a certain paper, or reading a book, some of the work just gets forgiven. Um, I don't know if you want to speak yeah, more to well, that. Well, I was in France, I actually did a whole English course on Shakespeare, so what I did was I just wrote one paper while I was in France, and then when I got back over a break, I wrote another paper, so they gave me full credit for the English course. They didn't actually give me credit for, I didn't take physics last year because I didn't want to like have to have too many credits to make up, but I did take math. They actually didn't give me full credit, so I would recommend like looking into that more because I only got like three court, two thirds credit for math because I didn't do it when I was in France. So if you want to get full credit, like discuss with the department. Yeah, you have to get your schedule approved by the academic office and talk to your advisor and talk to me about your plans and what you'll do while you're, you will get, um, you know, credit, there won't be like a hole in your transcript as though you weren't in school at all, um, but those grades in your exchange school 
don't appear on your transcript, <laughs> which is which can be a good thing. <laughs> uh, although I wasn't actually graded because the teachers just figured that I didn't want to take tests, so I was like, okay, sure. So I would just like read the book while they were all taking tests, and then um, I got my comments back from the French teacher, like she just doodles in her notebook for them. It's like, well, okay, but I wasn't like studying the material, <laughs> so I don't know. Just try to communicate with your teachers, I guess, or you'll end up like being just be doodling in class and then there weren't that things about you. <laughs> well, but also those comments don't go into your um, final report here. Yeah. We have to know that you're doing enough so that we can say you were engaged in an academic program, but we don't really want you stressed out about academics while you're there, because we want you to be immersed and engaged in that exchange program, not just doing all your whatsoever work in another location. <laughs> So oh, that that was, I, I did my junior year of college in France mm -hmm. for the whole year, and so I, I agree it's the most amazing thing that, that you can do and tell every kid to do it, but so I went for a full year, so if you're going for three months or two to three weeks, I'm trying to think of how, you know, when you're taking these classes over there, I was taking classes with French students in their university, mm -hmm. So if you're just doing a little bit like that, I'm assuming you're going in with them into their classes, but you're only seeing a little chunk of that. Um, so I'm wondering what that was like for you to just To just like kind of be thrown yeah. in. Um, for some classes it's harder than others. Like when I first got there, they were getting tests on history, things that they had already learned um, like in the previous term. So I mean, obviously I just didn't take the tests and I was able to like take notes and understand what they were talking about. Um, but like for French, they had actually just finished reading the book that I hadn't read because my exchange correspondent didn't exactly tell me like that they had already read the book. She was like, oh yeah, we're reading a book and I thought she meant like they were going to. But... So I would just like make sure it's very clear with whoever your exchange person is because like I know that for me, I didn't have any of the textbooks for school that I needed and um, I didn't like, know beforehand what books they need to bring or anything, so it just like, okay. Yeah. But again, yeah, it's challenging because you're just sort of thrown into the middle of it, but that's okay because you're just sort of shadowing, you're just having that experience. Those grades aren't going to matter. I got to read one book with them because once they finished it. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works here too. It's hard depending on when they come. Yeah. You know, we're not, it's not always like a fresh start. So it, it, that's challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, Leah just said something about her exchange person or her exchange correspondent. Mm -hmm. So do you have um, someone, are you in contact with the school at all to know, like, would you be able to figure out, like, what they've been doing and maybe if you wanted to, you could look into, like, some of the things that they've been studying a little bit beforehand so you're not just thrown in in the middle of them studying something that you've never heard of before? It's a possibility, yes. For the England exchange in particular, we haven't hosted uh, for a number of years. Um, they were doing renovations for a while, then we um, shifted the program a little bit. So the group that's going this spring, there's two girls going, and they don't have an exact partner. So some of our changes, it's more an actual exchange where the person's gonna come and you're gonna host them. With others, it's more of the ongoing exchange. So this year we're not receiving, we don't have the exact um, partner, but I'm, so I have a contact with each school, and then we just try to get as much information as possible. Um, so yeah, and certainly if you're willing to do even more work, remember, before you leave, you would be finishing your Westover exams. So be realistic about what you can take on. But yeah, the more you can prepare, the more you can wrap your head around the idea before you go, the more you'll get out of the experience, for sure. And then when you come back, then I constantly ask you to do things like this, where you come and share with other people, you help, um, like, if you're going, for example, Liam, you met with the two girls who were going to France this yeah, year. Yeah, last spring I met with them. So we try to keep that experience going when you come back, that you share, you help out yeah. with sometimes with admissions events or things that we're doing when we're talking about the exchange programs because I can talk about it forever, but it's really wonderful to hear from someone who's actually had that experience. So that's another part of it. When you sign up, you're aware that you're gonna do stuff beforehand and afterwards. It's not just go and forget about it. It's cool.
Oh, you can actually meet like the generations of Westover exchanges. Like when I was in France, mm -hmm. actually, um, she had she was in college, but the girl that had come when I was, I think, a freshman, was there like visiting the school. So I actually got to see like uh, another Westover exchange, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, because we've been doing it for so long, you do have those nice connections. Do you keep in touch with anyone you met over there? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's hard. It's really kind of hard because of the time difference. But like, I've skyped with my friends over there a lot, and um, we always just like message each other occasionally. Like, time. So I feel like if I ever go back to France, I have a lot of places I can stay, which is nice. Yeah. So as much as it's, uh, it seems to me, just as I'm just kind of getting this, the the academic aspect of it, while it's part of it, isn't the core element of it so that you're you're coming back with a full grade that's so to speak transferable to your thing here it's the immersion and the exposure yeah, yeah. and the connections and the bigger picture of what bigger planet you live on so to speak yeah right? yeah it's, it's very different from westover you just have so much free time so like in france they give you a lot less homework so like wow i'm just like hanging out with people all the time that they're work with not, not to say that you don't do any work but like it's kind of nice though in a way like you get to just different language and just I think that's almost like learning more than you would just do in sports. So. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The other thing that's great about the fact that we've been doing it for decades and decades and I have these contacts so if if certain world events happen and we need to know you know what's going on in Paris yeah, right. the woman there knows like since we have this relationship she contacts me right away we have that piece of it and you're, you're staying with families who have either just sent their girls to Westover or, will, or in most cases, will be sending their girls shortly. And so they also are, they have a vested interest in supporting the exchange because they know that we'll be doing the same or have just done the same for them. Um, so you'd be staying with a host family, you wouldn't necessarily stay at school? For England, the girls this year, they're staying at the school for the vast majority of the break, and then at the end of it, they have like a two-day homestay. Okay. And for that, it does sort of vary depending on the program and by year. For, um, for France, it's five-day week boarding, and then you go home on the weekends. So you get to do it. So for England, um, juniors aren't accepted? Well, so this is one of those things where Look, if it's only juniors who apply and it works out with your schedules and the other school says that's fine, we don't necessarily have a philosophical problem with doing that. So what's written there are sort of guidelines. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you have your heart set on, then yeah, let's let's talk. Um, and it works to your advantage if no one else clearly is applying for the program. You know what I mean? I will say that England and Australia are two of the most popular. Um, China and Jordan, not so much, because those were just much more challenging in different kinds of ways. Is we, Jordan in the fall time? That's how it is right now, but again, that's something that we could talk about, because the school there, they, we haven't sent someone in three years, and we really would love to, and they really would like to host. <laughs> so, um, they said, when I was going back and forth with them this past year, they, they said they'd be flexible. Because it's hard to miss, that one is hard, to miss the beginning part of Westover's year. You know, to come back and have missed, it's easier to miss the end of Westover, or the middle of Westover, just because you're, you don't have time to get sort of grounded and set. But anything is possible, sort of. <laughs> you know, so let, we can talk, let's, I work closely with the advisors and academic office, and I want to make a plan that's best for each kid. That might look different. For South Africa, is that uh, boarding, or is that with the host family? That is um, part boarding and then part. So week family. and weekend. Or, uh, yes, like exactly. Um, the same thing is true in Australia, except for this past year. One of the exchange partners was a day student, and so the kid, our kid who went abroad, um, one of them was with a local family the whole time, and the other one boarded. And the year before that, they did that, and then they switched halfway. Okay. Okay. 
So working with it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions, concerns. All of this is on the website. I know the website might be overwhelming because there's a lot of pages, but there's a lot of information there. Um, and really, just email me. You know, students you can set up a conference, parents just email me, we can chat on the phone, whatever, whatever is best. Um, are you on duty tonight? <laughs> what day is this, Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. well, tonight. I'll stop by. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. The flying so, yeah. situation would we be flying over with other students? Like, if there are other students in the program, do we all go together? That's what I'd recommend. It's easier. Easier yeah. for you guys, easier for the host school. Yeah. You have to go I have a class, but like, if you guys know anyone who's interested in the French or if your daughter wants to talk to me, like, I can have updated information instead of specific. Thank you. What's your name? Leah. Michelle. Michelle. Thank you, guys. We'll be in touch. What's your last name? Michelle, N A S H E L. Let me turn this off. Thank you for watching, whoever it is.